Hi, this is Carter with First Updates. Now I am here with the side bugs. I'm here with Zach, Jackson, and Vadim. Looking at this beautiful robot here, lots of 3D printing all around. Beautiful lift mechanism, something like I've never seen before. Let's get into it and behind the bot and here in a second. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Jackson, would you mind showing us a little bit about the pixel manipulation and talk about any iterations that you've gone through? So one of the main iterations we've gone through is with our lift. We used to have a uh, linear, or sorry, this is a linear four bar. We used to have a linear slide, which really just was not working because we'd tip over whenever we tried to reach our max height. With this, we can actually go under 12 inches and over 30. And then on top of that is the claw. The claw is one of the parts on our bot that we 3D printed. We have over 40 different designs for our claw and we have settled on this one and we really focus on it and to perfect it. And we went through so many designs, we think it's just the perfect one for us. Awesome, thank you very much. Can you show me a little bit about the different designs that you've gone through and talk me a little bit through the differences? So for example, for one of our first designs, we were coming up with a, an idea for an active intake. And then under that is a grabber from the, from the top. And then under that are the first designs of our first claw. We originally had two separate claws um, and that wasn't working as well because we really just wanted a more compact way to drop pixels onto the board. So then eventually all the way on the right side of the board, we started prototyping our new claw. Awesome, I love to see a bunch of different iterations. Make sure you have the best robot that you can have. Anyways, let's move on to the drone launcher and your climber system. Who's going to work on that? So, with our drone design, we went through multiple different designs, probably at least 30. And we decided on this idea with, because it is very accurate. And we decided to use, uh, uh, instead of rubber bands, uh, slingshot tubing because it uh, helps um, relieve the stress and it does not loosen as well and then with our hanging mechanism uh, they are all 3d printed and thanks to the uh, linear bar, bar they, they stay at the same angle so we never have to worry about uh, if the hanging is not correct awesome to hear and a question for you about the hanging mechanism specifically. You mentioned that it was 3D printed. Do you have any problems with the hanger snapping because it was 3D printed? Or any other mechanisms on your robot? Because I see a lot of different 3D printed parts across the robot. We used to, and then we would make new ones. But we use PLA Plus, which is a stronger form of PLA, so that we don't have to worry about cracks or snapping. Awesome. You love to hear it. So that was all on the hardware side of things. You love to see it, lots of iterations down here as well. Um, now let's move on to the software side of things. So Jackson, you have uh, different sensors across the robot. You're using odometry on the bottom here. So can you tell me a little bit about the software side of things? Um, yeah, so for our autonomous, we use Roadrunner, which is like Java. It uses uh, Java as its language. However, you can you you can save different pieces of code to uh, saved libraries, and this helps so we can pull different pieces of code, and it helps like we can do like strafe two, and we can take a strafe two command and we can manipulate it so it can do different things, and we can be constantly making new pieces of code. 
uh, we have a camera and that helps detect our game element in Auton. And uh, what it does is it takes a picture of the game element and then it runs it through some code and it detects the biggest like blob of color pretty much. And then it makes a guess on what where it is on the field and then it activates that specific Auton. Awesome, thank you very much guys. Looks like it's a very advanced team, both mechanically and software wise. Again, I'm here with the Cybugs. This is Carter with First Day Plays Now signing out. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.